Hey guys, here we're going to tackle conditionals. It's a very important part of programming because conditionals really allow you to manipulate data in a more controlled manner. So for example, let's talk gameplay wise. Let's say I press the button. Now how do I know I press the up arrow or the W key or the F key or the N key? So with conditional, you can apply checks, ifs, if I may be more precise, conditions to be able to check which button was pressed for example and then from here you just give a condition that if this button is pressed you can create movement you can create shooting and if the player can shoot well you shoot if not wait well, time to equip a gun or reload his magazine now conditional are basically if statements they're written as such you start with the if keyword then write in a condition, which is typically a boolean or an expression. Then if this condition evaluates to true, so if it is actually true, then this snippet of code will actually happen in the code, which comes in between the curly brackets. Now, if the condition is false, this section of code is ignored. So it's like we start with this and then go directly here in the code. So this creates a path where we just check to see if we go with a detour or just skip ahead, essentially. Now, if you want to create actually a diverging path between situation, we can actually use an else keyword. So in this situation, if the condition is true, then this snippet of code will happen and then continue on here. But if the condition is actually false, so in the other case, else, if not, Okay, this condition will happen and then continue right here. So that's basically how you can create branching paths using an if statement, and this is how it's written. So here is a basic list of all the operators we're most commonly going to use using an if statement. So where do these operators actually come into play? So the condition that comes in if statement, okay, usually it pits two variables against each other. For example, the first operator, the equal operator, it's two equal signs, and it just checks if dem.var is equal to dem.var2. For example, 2 equal equal 2 would return true, while 2 equal equal 3 would return false, if would not work. Now, same goes for the second one, which is not equal. So, for example, 2 not equal to 2 would return false and 2 not equal to 3 would return true. Now, this operator can't be used with numbers, but they can also be used with strings. So the next four operators are commonly used with numbers, not really strings, as less than, less than or equal, greater than, and greater than or equal. And as they say, they actually operate the same way as should be. For example, 2 is less than 3, which is true. or but 2 is not less than 1, which gives false. For the equals, if both variables are equal, it will return true. While if it's not equal, strictly less, then it will return false. So, of course, uh, there, uh, you can use a direct boolean uh, for the condition of this statement. And if you want to get the opposite of that boolean, you use the exclamation mark, or the not operator right before it. So if the attempt of condition is equal to true, not tan dot condition will be equal to false. Now, and of course you can change the conditions. For example, you can go if two is less than or equal to three. For example, of course using variable names would be great. And then you use this operator, which is the or operator, or five is greater than six. So this will actually say true because one of them is true. That's the or. So or means if at least one of these two are true, then the entire thing is true. On the other hand, the and operator right here actually does the opposite. The two must be true for the entire thing to be true. So if one of them is false, then every the entire condition becomes false. So these are the most common operators you're going to use inside an if function. It would be a really good practice just look at them, truly understand them, and try to get a grip 
and a hand on them. Okay, so now let's actually go into a concrete code example. So let's do something basic. So let's just check a number of values. So tem.my number, let's give it a value of around for six. Okay, then let's add our if statement, our condition. So if, now my condition will be if the number is actually greater than 10. I just want to simply say, I want to let my character say actually with player.chat that the number is greater than 10. Now, since we know about the else statement, so in case the number is not greater than 10, so else, we're going to say that it's actually lesser than 10. So now if we run this chunk of code, yep, 6 is lesser than 10, which is exactly what we expected. So now let's change a bit with the number. So for example, let's go with 12. And yep, 12 is greater than 10, so we do have this diverging path. But something really interesting happened when we actually add 10. So 10 is lesser than 10, which is actually not true. But right here, the operator just does not, is strictly greater. So if we add an equal here, yep, 10 is greater than 10, becomes true. Now, there is something really nice about if and else. They can stack, actually. So right here, let's remove this equal. So I want to treat this situation where actually my number is 10. I want to say the number is equal to 10. So what I'm gonna do on the else, the condition will only go to the else, like ignore this and pass on to here, only when the number is not strictly greater than 10, when this condition is false. So we can change it with another if right here, else if. Now we're gonna check the other condition, if the number is strictly lower than 10 not lower or equal, like we've been having. And then, if the case is not here, we can add an else again. And since the number is not strictly greater than 10, and it's not strictly under 10, that means it's only equal to 10. This is what we're gonna say. So, if you go to 12, 12 is greater than 10, stopped right here because this condition turned out to be true. Yep, 6 is lesser than 10. It ignored this condition because it was false. It came and checked this one. It was true, so it actually applied this. And now if we go back to 10, yep, here we go, 10 is equal to 10. Now, you can see right here that we're just using basic numbers, but you can actually manipulate that for position say my number was the position of the player and this was like a hitbox something i wanted to hit or another interactable in the world so i can say okay if i'm above the certain threshold which is 10 that means i'm past it if i'm below it that means i'm before it and if i'm equal to it that means my position in the world is on top of it which is i can give the player reward or anything so yeah it's basically the gist of how using ifs work. Now, something else I really want to show you with the actual if function is that you can create commands. For example, we're going to use a special function right now called onPlayerChats. It'll just trigger every time the player speaks. Right here, I'm going to use an if statement, and I'm going to ch check the chat, so player.chat. So if it is equal to, let's say, teleport, for now, like, you can imagine the potential of this, like you can actually teleport the player somewhere else, you can give them special coordinates. Right now, I'm just gonna keep it simple and just echo that I'm teleporting to new location. So if I run the script, of course we get the first script running. And then here, if I type in chat teleport, as you can see, it did echo. We are teleporting to a new location. Now, this is basically ifs and conditions, and how they work in GraalScript 2. And if you see anything that's a bit hazy still, if you still have any questions about it, we'll be more than happy to answer these questions and help you and guide you through it in our Discord channel. So you're very welcome to join and ask any questions. We'll be very glad to help you out with it.